Vancouver is coddled by a spectacular mountain range that we look at every day. But on the other side of that mountain range is a beautiful plateau and it's filled with lakes and trout and beautiful rolling hills. It's called the Caribou. And today we're going to load up the Navajo with the film crew and we're going to head up to the beautiful city of Quinell. Today's destination feature, we're loading up the film crew into the Navajo and flying due north to discover the small city of Quinell. Now, Quinell is located in the Caribou region at the junction of the Fraser and the Quinell River between Prince George and Williams Lake. The flight up to Quinell today will take us first along the Fraser Valley and then it's a turn north up through the Fraser River Canyon. Now, the gorge is semi-arid and has its own mini weather. The canyon was one of the first areas to be peopled in all of British Columbia. In fact, archaeological sites document the presence of the First Nations that date all the way back to 10,000 years ago. In recent history, during the Fraser River Gold Rush, thousands of miners populated its banks and towns. And from the valley, our flight takes us over the broad rolling hills of the Caribou that looks very much like the areas of the rolling hills of Quebec's eastern townships. What we discovered was a beautiful little city with a great feeling of community and a vibrant lifestyle. It's got a fascinating history and terrific outdoor recreation. Doug Mooring is a longtime resident and angling guide. He knows Quenelle and its roots with a history that began with Greece. First Nations used to trade Greece uh, Ooligan oil from the coast up over into our region, as far east as Alberta. 1793, Alexander Mackenzie come through here. First Nations people set him straight and where he was going. He turned around, went up river to the Blackwater, followed it, and that's why it's got the name the West Road River. So he followed the Greece Trail back to the coast. It was the first white explorer to cross Canada. Uh, Quinell was based on the gold rush. The river boats transported the miners here. It was a supply depot and a supply center for the gold fields. So then it uh, evolved over time into a forestry town. So that's what we've become, you know, since the 1930s. So there's a lot of history around here. It's probably one of the most historical spots in BC. Why would people come to visit? Well, people come to Quinell because our recreational opportunities are second to none in BC. We have a plethora of uh, activities around here, from mountain hiking, world-class Bower Lake canoe chain. We've got a real passion in following a fly fisherman that come in. It's like a migration out of the United States up here because Dragon Lake is world famous. We have Barkerville, best heritage attraction in BC. We have fishing, hiking, swimming, and it's easy access and lots of it for everybody. Doug is a true outdoor enthusiast and he has built his passions into several businesses, including a guest lodge and a fishing excursion company. The trips he offers are a great example of what enthusiasts can expect when they plan a trip to the region. We operate a 140 mile area here around Quinell. We do the world famous Blackwater River and that's dry fly fishing. It's the call of it eh? and the Blackwater's got some fantastic fly fishing. Eh? So dry fly all summer makes me happy. I'm a purist. Eh? And then we work Quinell River. It's a really good fishing river. It's beautiful. We got a species of trout up there. They're golden in color which is unique to BC. And what can people take away with them? People, they go away with a lot of things. They've had adrenaline rushes when they're here. They've had all kinds of great fly fishing. They've done a lot of activities, but they go away with how friendly and welcoming the people are. I think that's probably the real calling card for Quinell. The nice thing about filming in the smaller cities is people will always find the time to stop and talk to us. Weather's always good. People are always friendly. They always seem to find things to do outside rather than inside. It's small, but everyone knows everyone, so it's a safe place. <laughs> It's small and it's uh, very active and uh, it's very vibrant and it's, it really is a great place to raise a family and, and make a life. The town has all the amenities of a big city and its natural beauty is complemented by the gorgeous flower beds that are well attended by community members. The city also takes pride in its heritage as a gold rush town, immortalizing characters such as miner Billy Barker. Barker's discovery of gold helped settle the area and his legacy lives on at the Billy Barker Hotel and Casino. Visitors can stay in rooms reminiscent of the gold rush period, while the hotel exterior pays homage to the paddle wheelers that used to ply the nearby Fraser River. 
Whether you are looking for world-class fishing, frontier history, or just a place to call home, the city of Quesnel has tons to offer. Take some time to discover, for yourself, the hidden gem in British Columbia's Caribou region. Imagine 150 years ago, this was the original wagon road that went all the way from Quesnel all the way up to Barkerville. Now, the thing is, today, you can run up there in about an hour, but back in those days, it would take three or four days. And the reason was, they went by horses. The horses had to be refreshed every 10, 15 miles. So what happened was, they had built these roadhouses all the way along. Now, we've come across one. It's right here, it's called Cottonwood. It's pretty much exactly as it was 150 years ago. We're going to stop in, we're going to show you how you can come here and you can stay for $35 a night and come back and see what it was like 150 years ago. British Columbia's Caribou region is dotted with historical sites. In the 1860s, thousands of miners made their way up the Caribou Wagon Road to gold rush towns such as Barkerville. Now, roadhouses were required, and they sprung up all along the way in places such as 100 Mile, 108 Mile House, and here at Cottonwood. The black poplar is a cottonwood. And cottonwood guts their name from the fact that these trees, which grow prodigiously in this area, shed their seeds in June, July, and August when they're doing this. It's almost like snow falling. Back then, 150 years ago, they would take these stately trees down and make them into logs and build these wonderful roadhouses with them. And right here is one that was pretty much exactly as it was, standing today as a testament to the miners that would have stopped here and overnighted. We ventured inside the old roadhouse where I spoke to Kayla Plamondon, who told me all about what life was like at the Cottonwood Roadhouse in the 1860s. So take me back a century and a half ago. Well, this particular house was a roadhouse. It was considered a bed and breakfast along the Caribou Wagon Road. So people would come by here. This is the general store part of it. And they'd come in and they could buy anything they could possibly want along the Caribou Wagon Road. So coffee, tea, tobacco, feed for your horse, clothes, anything like that. Larger things weren't kept here. They were kept across the street and brought out to your stagecoach. But it would take a whole day to get up here, which, which yeah. took us a half an hour. Yes, just that's Just to right. get up this far. Yeah, the road to here was actually quite treacherous and stagecoaches took quite some time. Lots of people actually walked it. The best thing about Cottonwood is that just like the miners of the 1860s, you too can come here and spend the night. And the nightly rate is probably the lowest in all of British Columbia. Okay, here's the deal. Let's say you've got $35 and you don't know what to do with it. It's burning a hole in your pocket. So you take a drive up to Quesnel, and then from Quesnel, another half an hour, and you'd be up here in Cottonwood. Give them the $35, and they'll rent you this cabin. Sleep six so you can bring all your family along. And what were you going to do when you get here? There's lots to do. There's an open fire pit. There's croquet, there's dominoes, but most of all, you can just hang out around these old wonderful buildings and you can just imagine that you're living up here 150 years ago. It'd be great, it's quiet. Weather is always fantastic, sun shining all the time. And when you get here, you can also just motor up another half an hour up the road and you're gonna be in Barkerville or you can explore Cottonwood River here. When you get here, just say that West Coast Escape sent you. Now, I don't really know what that's going to do, but you can just say they sent you. And who knows, maybe they'll smile, just a little broader smile. When we were there, I stopped into the general store and found a hot pot of soup on the burner and some delicious pot pie. So whether you're following the tracks of the old Caribou Wagon Road or hoping to find some lingering gold in the Caribou Gold Fields, the Cottonwood Historic Site and Roadhouse is a perfect rustic West Coast escape. Billy Barker's discovery of gold in a place called Williams Creek in 1862 would start a stampede of thousands of miners into this area and it would change the face of British Columbia for the next 150 years. With the discovery of gold, Barkerville was born 
helping set the stage for the economic boom of British Columbia and its eventual confederation with Canada. Now Barkerville is in the Caribou region just an hour's drive north into the mountains from the quaint town of Quenelle. Barkerville is a historical treasure. Unlike other gold mining towns which have fallen into decay, the town is still here. A thriving piece full of history where you can walk down the streets of a 19th century town. Each year thousands of people from all over the world travel up to Barkerville to experience the time capsule firsthand. But getting here now is a whole lot easier than the journey taken by the early miners. They traveled the Caribou Wagon Road, called the eighth wonder of the world, and came up here to Barkerville, where they would reach the gold fields. And what a gold fields this was. Billy Barker's claim would eventually yield 37,500 ounces, which is $49 million today. Now Barkerville was a typical town of its day, mixture of log homes and false front houses, built on stilts along a muddy road. You can imagine what this would have been like 100 years ago in a heavy rainstorm with miners walking up and down here. There'd be thousands of people here. This is what it was like living here in those days. And people didn't live very long. It was a tough life. You went out there and maybe broke your leg. And now today you'd go and get it fixed. In those days, you could probably succumb and, and die and be buried in the cemetery up here. It was a ruddy life. What happened is some people found their gold and most didn't. But eventually the gold played out. By the end of the century, people were moving out of town and moving into the Yukon gold strikes. Barkerville, remote and desolate by location, would eventually become a ghost town. Well, today the Caribou Gold Rush is over, but something has replaced it. It's the Tourism Gold Rush, and that's in full swing. Today, Barkerville remains a town of discovery and adventure with its unique streetscapes of over 125 heritage buildings period rooms, displays, there's everything here. They've got live stage shows going on, gold planning, stagecoach rides, the list goes on. There are shops and restaurants, and of course, there's even a place where you can stay. Saya? Hi. You're a full-time resident. I am. Good In fact, I'm the only resident of Barkerville who lives here full-time. What do you do here? I own and operate the St. George Hotel. And we were operate as a bed and breakfast. Formerly it was a saloon and brothel, but these days you have to bring your own woman. <laughs> How many women would have been in here? How many rooms? I'm really not sure. As there are seven rooms, let's say seven. And at one time it was connected to the Nickel Hotel. It was a joint venture. And there was a walkway that uh, connected to the two buildings. So they'd be going back and forth. As would the miners if they needed to get away from their wives who were looking for them. <laughs> now let's get to the present day. Can you make money at this? Can you make money at this? Well, I make them enough to live on, and I have a heck of a great time. I work for five months of the year, I have the rest of the year off, and that really works for me. <laughs> so it's a lifestyle. It's, it it's is. It's a job with a lifestyle. Isn't it, it totally is. I, really, I do it because I absolutely love it. Like getting dressed up like this every day and being in this town where everybody else is all in the same, you know, time warp, it's really a lot of fun. So when people come here and stay and spend a day or two and then are leaving, what, what are they coming away with? Um, you know, what mostly, it's just a really social experience here. And because I have the place decorated in 1890s fashion and we all eat together at this enormous boarding house reach table, um, they really feel that it uh, was very social and welcoming and warm and they have a great time. In fact, there's so much to do here at Barkerville when you come here, plan to spend at least two days. <laughs>